Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about Vindelander by Adrian Goldsworthy. Uh, this is the first and as it stands the only book in what the author's website assures me will be a series of indeterminate and vague length. It is historical fiction set on the northern frontier of the Roman Empire in Britannia in AD 98. Uh, so that's 55 years after the Roman occupation of Britain began and about 25 years before Hadrian's Wall was built. We follow the adventures of Centurion Flavius Ferox. Um, of course it's a Centurion, that's like quite a trope for this sort of ancient Roman historical adventure novel. It's like nine times out of ten, it's either a famous Roman general or a, a centurion. And the other one time out of ten, it's Spartacus. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so we follow Flavius Ferox as he tries to keep peace in the sort of tense borderlands of the Roman Empire in the face of indigenous unrest and sort of plotting a bit closer to home as well. So is it any good? Well, it's okay, I guess. Mm. Uh, it's kind of let down a bit by some pretty heavy-handed writing. There's some pretty you no know, hackneyed tropes and some major plot contrivances, uh, which I'll sort of get onto later. Uh, but first, let's be positive because there are some good things about this book. There's some stuff that it does pretty well. Uh, so Adrian Goldsworthy is an expert in his field and has written a bunch of uh, non-fiction books on the Roman period, on the, the Roman army specifically. And I've, I actually own a couple of them and they're very good. Uh, this has the result that the historical accuracy is second to none. And apart from a couple of forgivable occasions, uh, he avoids falling into the look how much I know info dump uh, that is kind of a trap for a lot of historical fiction authors uh, who've done loads of research into their period. Uh, his understanding of the cultural setting is also clear from how he displays the indigenous cultures with uh, an awful lot of nuance and he juxtaposes this with a uh, kind of Roman patrician attitude that wants to sort of lump them all together under one sort of blanket barbarian culture, uh, which incidentally is an attitude that you will see in a lot of historical fiction unintentionally from authors. But uh, it, so it's quite nice to see Goldsworthy sort of highlight that uh, and, and make it a feature of the book. Uh, in terms of his writing style, Goldsworthy does a real good job in the uh, opening sections of the book, establishing the geographical setting as well. Uh, he uses the, the geographical setting, the physical setting to help establish the tone uh, and you really get a sense of this being some half abandoned, half forgotten arse end of nowhere at the very limits of civilization. And also, I think his pacing was good uh, for the story he was telling. It started off a little bit slower as the mystery element of the plot was uh, unfolding, but then picked up towards the uh, in the second half as we moved into sort of more action-based general adventuring uh, beyond the borders. And that uh, increase in pace uh, matched the. Uh, increase in stakes uh, as the plot progressed. Uh, having said all that, there were some pretty glaring, uh, sorry, pretty glaring weaknesses that do probably mean I'm not going to rush out to get the second book in this series when, when it comes out, whenever that is. The plot in particular, you know, while it could have been good for uh, a sort of adventure historical fiction novel like this. It had this uh, prophecy trope in it that felt really hackneyed and it was also let down sort of as I said before by some pretty major plot contrivances. So there's like one point where the main character uh, Flavius Ferox and his like sidekick 
are in this life and death situation and this guy appears from out of complete nowhere um, it hasn't appeared before in the book apart from a couple of you know little mentions and he rescues them from this life and death situation and then he just so happens to have exactly the right bit of information they need to solve the mystery that's been going on for the first half of the plot uh, and then they get ambushed by some angry natives and they the two you know the main character and his sidekick survive but the this plot device character just gets killed straight away and it, it really just felt super contrived yeah not great writing and as well there are also some problems with character the main character has this really strong backstory uh, established early on in the book uh, in, the, in the prologue I think uh, and this is reinforced throughout uh, where he's got this lost love and he's also got problems with alcohol abuse uh, the problem is that in spite of being mentioned repeatedly, none of the neither of these two factors affect his decisions or his actions in any discernible way. In fact, there's like a couple of times where he does attend parties where there's sort of drinking going on, and he seems like the most sensible drinker out of all of them. You know, he wants to keep his wits about him. He's getting them to water down his wine while everyone else is getting uh, drunk. I don't know. It didn't. There wasn't a lot of follow through on that backstory. And there's one last point that I've got to mention because it's a personal bugbear. This might not bother some people, but there's one chapter where there's a, this character gets introduced, Caraticus, right? And Caraticus, uh, he is an actual historical figure who was the leader of the resistance to the Roman invasion of uh, the island of Britain. And clearly, this is one of Adrian Goldsworthy's like just favourite historical figures. So he's just shoehorned him in out of context, really. Yeah, again, not, you know, he's, if he wanted to write a story about Caraticus, he should have written a story about Caraticus and not just squeezed an out of context reference into this book. That's just my opinion. That's a personal bugbear, like I say. So, who would I recommend this book to? Well, if you want a realistic representation of the workings of a Roman border post and the Roman army in a vividly described northern British setting, and you really don't care about plot and characters, then you might like this. If plot and character are important to you in a novel, I would suggest that you try something else. So, uh, bye, I suppose. <laughs>